Hello, hello, welcome to the Mochi Podcast. My name is Christopher Udley, and this, this, this is Voice of the Underground. underground. You know, as we started last week, you know, I had my man, my boy, right behind me. (laughs) And today, he's right behind me again. You know what that means? It means that I'm stable. <laughs> it means I've got like I'm like a motor car with four tires, four wheels on like uh, a two-wheeler bicycle. You know? <laughs> exactly. You know, speaking of balance, I've got comfort right behind my back today. Again, yeah. as my co-host. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another That's day good. doing it again this Tuesday morning. As good. you said, it's a special one today. Special guest in studio, so we're going to have an awesome one. Exactly. For sure. Exactly. Speaking of special guests, we have a trendsetter in the studio. We have my boy, my man, DJ Raps, in the house. What today. up, what up, Round what up, applause. what up, what <laughs> up. Yeah. DJ Raps, DJ Raps. Do it out for him, yo. DJ Raps, DJ Raps, DJ Raps. I bet you can say this one, but fool it. That one's gonna shove my neck out, man. All right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Morgis Podcast. This is how we're gonna roll today. We on the ride, on the flight with DJ Raps. Our trendsetter, number one SA DJ, global like that. He's been through it all, you know. He does his own beats, perform his own beats all around the globe, you know. Based here in Johannesburg, big sound, big mind, big heart. Once and again, welcome, DJ Raps. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, podcast. thank you for having me. And this is the voice of the underground. No doubt, you gotta blow it out to the surface this time around. No more underground. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Let's kick it off. Start at DJ Raps. Who is DJ Raps? Yeah, man. Um, DJ Raps is uh, Raverani Madura. That's my uh, name that my father and my mother gave me. Mm-hmm. Um, grew up in Venda, somewhere in the north of South Africa. All right. And um, I'm a producer, I'm a DJ, I'm an entrepreneur. I do a whole lot of things, man. Mm. And uh, I'm based here in Joburg. Um, I'm well known for a song called uh, Count Your Blessings. Mm. I think mm. that's one of the biggest songs I've done. Good. And um, I've got my own record label, wow. Freeze the Moment Productions. Uh. And Freeze, the, a, yeah, Freeze, Freeze the Moment. Freeze the Moment yeah. Production. Yes. Okay. All right. So. I do a lot of work mm. with uh, other mm. DJs, other artists, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, basically, mm. in a nutshell, that's mm. raps for food. You know, the DJ raps, man. Yeah. It's more like a CV that I've never, I've never seen before. It's more like <laughs> like, a, like a Donald Trump CV <laughs> <laughs> within ten seconds. Yeah, <laughs> it's more or less like a Donald Trump CV. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> Comfort, man. We we we've got a giant here today. Absolutely. DJ Reps. Yeah. Can you tell your people what how 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 I mean how was childhood, you know? Well, mm. you know, I know you 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 born in Vendor. Yeah. You know, how was childhood in Vendor? Did you ever grow up there anyway in the first place? Yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, my whole childhood I mm. was in Vendor mm. and were you, one Looking, of those, were you one of those kids who were playing around without no panties on or something? Yeah. <laughs> in the mud, you know, that you kind know of stuff, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Swimming in the rivers. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, th- I, th- that's my childhood, man. Um, great, I'm yeah. very grateful for that childhood, by mm-hmm. the way. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, coming to Joburg or mm-hmm. to a city like Joburg, mm-hmm. you have no clue or you have no fear you know you have everything to mm. to fight for you exactly. know you have all the spirit you know mm. you're not spoiled um yeah you you just ain't, um hungry for success you know um so 
growing up there was fun for me. I mean, I grew up in the rural of the rural areas. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And um, like but he's I, saying. Mm, but I think most of the people who grew up in the rural area, they always become successful. Was it true? True. What, what was was like? There's nothing. How is it like that? What's 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 the notion? I mean, what's the magic behind it? I think uh, we're more tougher because I mean you. You grew up with pop and Morocco, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we so hungry for success. Mm. Like even though I come from this area, mm. I wanna make sure that I get somewhere, you know. Um, we have family to feed in the background, mm. in, in, in mm. back in back at home. Mm. Um, mm. There's just nothing for you to lose. How did you get into what? What? what I mean, you know. Um, I mean, like most of us african kids you know when we're growing up you understand what i'm saying music is like you know most of i mean like a, like a strange profession mm. you understand mm. what i'm saying mm. because i knew when you try to do this music in the village because other kids still be you know riding with soccer and you know maybe like you know athletic or something yeah. like that you know what was what i just wanted to be based on that kind of situation whereby you still at home not yeah. in Jerberg yet don't even move to Europe again. Yeah. Where you still at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, honestly, I never thought I would be in the music space in my life. Okay. Like, growing up, I wanted to be either mm. a doctor or a pilot. Okay. And uh, only when I was mm. in varsity, in fact, when I was finishing varsity, mm -hmm. and that's when I realized, hey, man, I can make people mm. uh, dance, mm. you know? So back then, it was just no music except for the music they played at home that's okay. all and which was not even house the same yeah okay yeah. So speaking of house music you know um you know a couple of people always try to like you know uh, um uh, what can i say like kind of compare house music to some kind of euro sound uh. you know did you ever felt like the house music that you, you you're talking about right now has any relationship with the le electronic sound or, le or dance music or what do you call it? Yeah, for me it's a bit different because mm. I mean I make what they call Afro tribal, mm. okay, which is in between your deep house and your mm. your commercial. Mm. It's neither one mm. of them, you mm. know. Mm. So, and when I was traveling overseas, that's when I discovered that, in fact, they are more. They are looking for sounds, mm. African sounds, mm. outside, you know. Mm. Like that's when. I realized, oh man, we are in the right path, you mm. know. Like mm. for me, South Africa is the mm. uh, the capital of house music. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But what I mean, like, let's say for example, you know, first and foremost, tell us how many siblings you've got. How many siblings? Yes. I have three older brothers. And uh, uh, the other ones, what did you? What I'm not. <laughs> 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 what did they understand the music or something? No, none of them understand music. Okay, so how did your parents felt when you like came through with I'm this kind music. of your music thing? Yes. Well, it took a while. It took me to be sending a lot of money at home. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's working out. It's working out. You never used to send this much money when you were working in the corporate world. So yeah, that, that's what it took. Is it so? Speaking of corporate world, were you once in the corporate world? Yeah, I was. Okay, like, tell us about it. Come on. Um, I worked for a spa mm -hmm. head office. Okay. And I was uh, taken as in a trainee, and they promoted me to become mm. uh, a retail operations manager. St I store think. manager, something like that. No, okay. retail ops manager. That oh. guy that comes in mm. and the shop owners. Oh, okay. Get shaken, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I was a, a retail operations manager for Spa, and um, I think that groomed me so much in the business sense. And then when I left, uh, there was a company that he hunted me for three years, mm. uh, Yardley, the ones for perfumes, mm -hmm. makeup, okay. and yes, all that. So yes. I became the regional manager. Wow. Uh, in Cape Town, they took me to Cape Town. How know. could you be a regional manager for Yadley and still jump back to music? Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's when I discovered, man, this is I not for I me. Want, I'm not sure I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. sure I would do that, eh? Yeah, that's when I was like, oh, okay, I can do this, but it's not for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you did that comfort. No. Oh, I'll, I'll uh, you start. Yeah, <laughs> I'm stuck. I think I'll give it some, depending on the situation. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um. 
you know it's quite interesting your 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 little bit so far we haven't even gone anywhere but it's like it's getting hot in here you know um you know so let me say i want you to take you know your fans you know the people that look up to you you know because a couple of the kids out there like they know dj raps you know rock your music all over the clubs and everywhere you know you know this is one thing i like about voice of, of the underground you know what i'm saying because you're able to speak to the people who are actually like maybe the people that are actually making you you know what i'm saying yo so just can you take us through you know your process of like deciding like you know i want to be your dj i know you'll be coming from the yearly background regional manager and all that dealing with all sort of expensive perfumes and and merchandise and all that what i mean the journey pin the picture of the journey like you've never painted it before yo okay let's say um everything is going well with you mm. like mm. people don't really get into the zone where they understand what you're feeling mm. um i wasn't happy at okay. the time mm. like but i would wake up like imagine waking up in the morning every day and like oh, mm. man oh mm. what time it can i sleep one more hour <laughs> yeah. and then by one o'clock you want to go back home mm. i'm like this is not for me mm. i'm like I want to wake up when I want to wake up you exactly. know and even now mm. like it's not like waking up is a problem for me no it's not but so based on that yours is more or less like you needed some kind of uh, freedom to yeah, do exactly yeah, what you yeah. or was it was it having to do more with like like you know because I knew some of the artists is that something they will actually make them or push them to that level is that you know the what called creative madness that's true because I mean imagine doing something you love so much mm. and waking up to actually fulfill that dream mm. and there's a lot of um, kids out there mm. with, but it's just it's not it's not an easy world mm-hmm. the music space yeah, exactly yeah, so uh, the shift from um, going from the corporate world to mm. the music for me mm. i made it when i saw that i was getting enough income mm. musically to All be right. able to sustain my life okay you know so if i had just gone out with music and a couple mm. of i wouldn't have made it because mm. that's how that's where a lot of people fail because yes. okay now i've got this heat mm. okay, let me go try it out mm-hmm. and then they leave their okay. so in yeah. other words like okay let's say let's put this journey this way mm. this is like okay you actually like you know you have some doing already mm. you know like you you had a stable income or something yeah. all right but the 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 creative madness is still driving you crazy it's true that okay it's fun i've got a couple of cash right now i've got a couple of things i'm i'm, I'm ready for the music i'm yeah. ready i'm ready to to make this creative instinct a yeah. reality yeah okay that's exactly what you what try is that what you try to explain about yeah that's what i'm trying to say okay. like it's 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 not an easy world mm. like i'm saying mm. um so it's better to mm. be sure because you need money mm. in music mm. you need to find it's like a business yes. you can't just start a business without any uh cash flow mm. if you know what i'm saying mm. so you need to have cash flow you need to know how you where you're going at least make some money first see that this is um stable it's happening every week or every month mm. i'm making so much money every month mm. and then you can shift there you know what i'm saying and then you can put your focus all your focus in there okay and that is a very wise choice so now let, let's say because you see music let me tell you some you know this is south africa you know you know some saying that that when we've got quieter we've got um um afro pop mm-hmm. jazz yeah. you know we've got like i mean this place is so diverse when it comes to i, I think this is one of the most diverse country when it comes to musical genre per se mm. At what point does an artist in South Africa decide like okay no this is exactly what I want this is the kind of genre that I want to do because I know every young kid like you know growing up I I I foresee or I foresaw that you know you wouldn't be like growing up with house music like you know when I want to be a musician I want to be a house musician you know so how, at, at what point do you get to realize that this is where this is what I can do house music well i think for me it's a spiritual thing okay um, because even when i make music mm. like i f- 
I can hear a full song in my head which I've never heard anywhere. Just like when you're driving somewhere, you like your head is ringy, banging. Yeah, you've like got melodies in your song. head. There's a you've complete got... song. <laughs> like I have to go to the studio. Like me, I need to put it down. Okay. So um, I think anyone who connects with a certain genre, mm. and then they can decide mm. this is for me because um, there's plenty, you know. All right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, mm. so I'm going to go back to Venda's childhood and all of that. Um, you said that you were not exposed to much house music and all True. of that. Mm. Yeah. So in an interview, you said that uh, you were inspired by people like uh, Hugh Massigan yeah. musically. Yes. So did you listen to a lot of him? Did you draw inspiration from him? And what other artists did you draw inspiration from? Um, well, true, like the legendary um, mm. Oliver Mtukuzi, all right, so yeah. rest in peace. Mm. Um, I listen to a lot of um, there is a group called Aziambe Band from Venda. Mm. So for me, it was because my dad was playing those kind of music. Mm. Uh, there was that was all I could now yeah, you know to. listen to. Yeah. Mm. And when I see when I, when I look at my music now, mm. because it's more like a jazz in house. Okay. So I can see okay, I drew a lot of inspiration from. A jazz artist, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, when were you introduced to house music? Like, yeah, maybe exactly. at the club, you're like, damn, this mm. is my vibe. Mm. I got introduced to house music when I was in varsity. There was an album by, okay. um, uh, what's his name? It was Mikonko Volume 3. Mm. What's his name? And he passed on. Mm. Um, he was a YFM DJ. DJ. Don't you know the guy? skinny guy but <laughs> yeah. speaking of varsity you know yeah. i want you to like you know, because before i jump back around you know that's what i'm saying because you know as 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 somebody who's been you know, I'm, I'm always like an og in the music business and i got a couple of kids coming to me like you know how can i do this when do i do this you know you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and what i realize is that most kids they want to skip education before actually mm -hmm. I, I, you understand what i'm saying yes people uh, I mean, as, as a trending DJ in this country, people call you like, no, I, I've got talent, I won't leave. You know, some they won't quit, like, yeah. uh, high school, yeah. you know. Uh, my talent is too heavy for me, I won't quit high school, you know. But you, I heard you speak of varsity and all that. Mm. How did you, uh, just tell us, take us through the journey of elementary, high school, and varsity. Well, look, as a musician, mm. uh, you are like a product. Right. Okay. Right. So now, how are you going? Are you just going to be a product that needs to be sold mm. on its own, or you need to know what's happening? Yeah. For example, uh, in my company now, which I'm running, mm. um, I know how to do income or to read income statements. <laughs> I right. know what to do, how to do forecasting. Okay. But you would not know those things if mm. you did not go to school or you don't have yeah. experience. Exactly. Of those kind of things how to market your brand how to um you know mm. like today we are here today mm -hmm. like mm. time you saw what time i got here exactly and i was telling him i'm never late on oh, interviews beautiful you know so beautiful. those kind of that's elements my man. that's my man let's give it up <laughs> you know that's the right thing. <laughs> it's only DJ right yeah you know and you know and from the business background that these are the things that you gain from true yeah, yeah. yeah okay so Please continue with that because I, I really want these kids to to understand that, or I want your fans to understand that, you know, you can do music yeah. like, you know, from a business background, you can actually complete. Because like what I was saying, mm. I uh, you know I bump into kids who wants to actually quit high school. Some even want to quit elementary because uh, they think they've got all of the talent in the world. Yes. Yeah. So as I was explaining. Mm. Um, because a product needs to go through all the phases. Exactly. Uh, the marketing, the mm. advertising, mm. Um, the reintroduction again, because that's what happens. Mm. A lot of people in the industry, mm. uh, you'll find um, they come in, they have the talent, they hit one song, and mm. then they are out of the industry. Exactly. The, the, you never hear about them. That's mm -hmm. now the failing part of the reinventing the, the you know, keep your career or something keep, yeah mm. the product you know what i'm saying mm. so um school is very important mm. 
first of all um getting an income mm. um from um from a company that you work for mm. is is cool. something that can build mm. your own brand you know mm. also the experience that you get from there mm. is way much m- more important than uh, just getting in the industry because a lot of them they just see the fame you you, know? you only see I never post when I don't have food at home but <laughs> you see me riding a beamer down the street you know you think, I was ah, like damn. you know when this artist show up at the interview like you know I saw this kind of black beamer I thought like you know, you know? <laughs> 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 then I thought that no yeah. man who's this now who's this now you know yeah. I never knew that this is DJ Revs man yeah. so you know, I mean by and large it's always very like kind of very uh powerful to have a background it's more or less like you know You know wh- wh- I mean let me tell you how this looks like. Mm. You know, when you have a background before you actually pick up your so setting career. Mm. You know, you are no difference between a rich kid. Mm. You know why? Mm. Because you are already like more or less already in the like, rich or in, in yeah. the, the you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, I think that's that, that's very um I thought that was dope like you know you can actually like sit down here and like you know mention the university the, the high school and all of yeah. those things, and all of the work experience you know mm. I, i i i thought that that, that that's very great and something for kids to emulate now let's say as a dj you know you're quite busy all right mm. tell us how busy um during the week i'm mm. making music i'm mm. doing interviews i'm meeting people because mm. i mean i'm not just doing the music mm. i'm running the music business okay so mm. i even distribute music for other people awesome i even produce music for other people awesome. so uh even now mm. i was working on a new song mm. um i've just finished it and they approved for mm. a mu- for a movie that's coming up mm. so those kind of things mm. music is a mm. big business but as mm. Many artists don't see it that way. Okay. You just see mm. uh, make music, music, release album, album get and, gig, and leave gigs f- and that's it. And live fly high yeah. or some yeah. you know. Yeah. Okay. You, you know? Mm. So for me it's important to connect with mm. the people mm. um I mean you can music is everywhere mm. like every shop you go to mm. you hear music. Exactly. In the malls, mm. in the cars, like It's a big business, mm. but um, unfortunately, lately mm. Mm. we don't make much money mm. through selling of the music. So okay. that's where you need to now apply to what you learned in varsity. Yeah, exactly. Now what yeah. do I do if this is failing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know, music is so good for someone like you because you know you've got all of these retail experiences. Yeah. You know, and and I mean, this kind of experience is very um, is very good because mm. many of the other artists like you know they struggle with. Um, Uh, with the, with the business part of it you know that's true you know speaking of the business part of the music you know what i'm saying this is where many people is stuck and true. someone like you will be the very best person to actually like you know delve into it a little bit for people to you know kind of have an idea yeah. you know but let's say take for instance as a, as a music as a music producer or something as a, okay now let me tell you how we work these days these days we have beat makers mm-hmm. and we have producers yes what is the difference all right cool a producer is a guy who will call mm. who he has an idea of how he wants the end product no, okay but he cannot do it mm. so he will call the guitarist mm. the pianist mm. and another guy the engineer so he'll get them in one room okay and then he will tell them i want it to be played like this i want it to be and then he'll have a music Okay. Mm. A beat maker is a mm. guy who probably just in his studio mm. is making a beat. Mm-hmm. A DJ is now the mm. one who takes the finished product mm. to go and play. Okay. You know, that's mm. how you can um, mm. put it. Okay. From your definition from the way, from what I'm sensing is that you are a combination of both. I am. How do you manage to juggle both? Okay. Mm. I think it's also the the spirit I have like I believe I can do anything. Mm. Um, you'll be surprised mm. at what talents mm. other talents than mm. the music i have or wow. able to do <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it, that, that's how you speak on the yeah. microphone yeah. <laughs> the list is endless <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so yeah i'm i'm also a radio presenter by the way wow just like me yeah just like you oh man so, um, today <laughs> do we compete now or some no no no, no. this is your space now yeah i'm your visitor no. today <laughs> so um and i'm a good cook Oh wow. I have a restaurant as well. <laughs> do, you, do you also have taxes yeah. or something? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I work in the electrical space. We do uh, street lights, mm. um, installation and maintenance. Wow. And prepaid meters. So that's mm. what there is a lot to me. Like I think I can do anything. Wow, that's that's great, eh? Hey? Yeah. That's that's it's, entrepreneurial. Yeah. All right. Um you know what? Um like I said before we haven't even gone half but it was like kind of you know piling up and everything is piling up and piling up you know did you rap so is that kind of artist when you put him in the studio you know you you definitely like you know have um millions of things to to check out and millions of things to say you know yeah. um speaking of millions of things you know um you know as a producer all right you know what makes you think that you know this song i'm i'm making now is the one that i want to take to to the world okay by the way every producer yes. or every dj that or every beat maker mm. that makes a beat mm. trust me when they leave the studio they think this is the one mm, mm, mm. okay that process you're like wow this this is the one yes. <laughs> You see how many songs you hear out there mm. that are work. Mm. That producer thought this was the one. But then what I do mostly is cuz I take longer to finish producing songs mm. because I like tweaking things and making sure that you can listen to it over and over again and never get tired of it. By eliminating sometimes it's just small volumes. Uh, maybe a high hat is too high but you can't hear it when you're producing later on you'll hear oh you know I need to reduce so that's how that's the process I, I take okay. um, and um, sometimes then just taking the song not even telling the people just play it and see the reaction from the people around when they start asking who song is this who song is then that's where you know oh okay this is you know we at the right direction Yeah that's as, as, listen as as you know with with your bundle of experience and everything yeah. you know producing you know because I knew okay part of it is like from <clears throat> from my uh from this conversation I understand that you are also uh, the beat maker most of the times as well mm. you know um out of on the in, in the pack you know in the pack producer beat maker Let's even leave the business off first. Right in the studio, which one do you like? You know, enjoy most. Which one drives you? I think um, producing. Okay, the producing, like yeah, like where I would mm. maybe have an mm. ele- a, a, a skeleton of a beat, mm. and then mm. I'm saying I can play keys, mm-hmm. but now damn, there's a mm. professional keyboard. Keyboard, okay come to the studio because mm-hmm. they normally know what exactly you want sound okay you know mm. as much as you can lay it down they mm. might just say oh no mm. but if you do this mm. then the producing it means you can have a professional beat mm. out as soon as you're finished you know mm. and then that's it all right yeah. then um let's say um the beat making part you know it's just like as you mentioned like you play keys you know yeah. you know why because this is this is very important like Remember when I said to you some of the kids they want they want to quit so many good things to pursue like you no know, I've got talent you know what I'm saying yeah so how did you get to acquire the, the skills for playing the music for example if for for example if you don't want to like or maybe how you started out is yeah. not how you are right now isn't it <clears throat> because you, you can't you just can't be a producer yeah. at the beginning like you know at the beginning hopefully or maybe realistically you had an idea how yeah. you want your music to go you can even engineer by yourself yeah. and know that you have all of those knowledge yeah. sound engineering and all of those technical aspect of putting a beat together can you just tell us how how, how you go yeah, exactly uh well also i've learned i went to school to play piano okay okay, okay. okay. 
where the question was going. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, let them know. Let them yeah. know. Yeah. So I went to school to play piano, and um, mm. there are other instruments. I'm not shy, you know. When I get to a place, mm. you, I, I'm not that kind of a guy who. Mm because now people know me yeah. as this DJ mm. and then if I don't know something I ask you know mm. I'm like hey guys mm. how, how do you do this how did you get this kick to be like this mm. I'm forever learning like, okay. I'm never arrogant enough to say no I know better than everyone or it's, I know better than you I can say it's showing all over your face man humble man humble guy you know a lot of good things always happens to humble people you know um like <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying yeah a lot of good things happen to uh, humble people you know they never lose in anything or like in anything let's say for example in the music industry south africa right now you know what i'm saying paint a picture um paint a picture say exactly how you see it to be quite honest with you yes. the industry right now is mm. fucked up why how did you say that uh, I'll, I'll I'll elaborate. Okay. I make great music. Oh, okay. good. Everyone knows. All right. When mm. you listen to my music, you'll know. Mm. But for example, mm. my album that just came out last year mm. has been submitted to all the radio stations. Mm. But you'll probably hear one radio station or two radio stations. Taking it up, picking it up. Because mm. I'm competition to a lot of people because I do everything in house. Mm. I'm an independent. Okay. The big guns, mm. the big labels mm. are closing doors for mm. people mm. you will see a guy who has been doing so well in a certain record label when he leaves the, the record label mm. nothing but he's still creating the same kind of music listen this is this is this is touch i mean this is this is key your, yeah. your response so what do you think is like that what do you think the big uh, label yeah. one that uh, never won the independent uh, were they supposed to support the independent people or were they supposed to like create some kind of atmosphere where they can strive? What do you think they're doing that? Obviously, we competition. Like they see us as competition. All like right. If if if, mm. if I'm not under a record label mm. um, and I'm doing everything myself, I'm Ye saying, yes. you know how much percentage they gave me when I I licensed my album mm. with a label? Mm. Twenty percent. Okay. Twenty percent. Wow. And. Mm. When I'm selling everything myself, mm. I'm 100%. I own 100% yeah. of everything. But but let's say, what about quantity? Like, yeah, you won't sell more. Okay, no, as much as there's mm. quantity, you know, mm. there's where you can say volume. Mm. There's volume, yeah. Yeah, there's, they will sell the volume, mm -hmm. but they'll give you the 20% All right. of your work. <laughs> okay. Of your talent, okay. your creativity. Mm. Um, it's not fair. Mm. But a lot of people do it so that they can mm. quickly get up there. Mm. And when they are up there, they think, oh, no, man, I need to go do this by myself. Mm. And when they go do, do it by themselves, mm. the record level closes doors everywhere. Mm. People, you know, it's funny how people pay mm. uh, compilers mm. to say, do not play this guy's music. Like, seriously? I promise you. Do I, for example, let's say none, none of this is good, all right? Yeah. Do I supposed to pay a compiler? To play my music or do I supposed to pay a compiler not to play somebody else's music you are not supposed to pay a compiler all right he's working in a in, in, in a in a radio that's his job yeah. to take to listen to music and say mm. this is good let's play it well um DJ Raps, you know, speaking of uh, all of those confusion, radio station, even at your level, like, yeah. you know, at your... At your <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. what we were speaking about last week, uh, uh, right. people paying, submitting music, like, yeah. play my music. Yeah. All right. <laughs> even at your level, if we can still experience things like that, then, um, you know, they must just, uh, the, I think the young musicians or some of the other people who are out there, like, they think they are on top of the world, they should rather look to our direction. True, no, but at, at, at the same time, yes. um, there's other ways of making money through mm. music. Exactly. You don't have to just make money through mm. people hearing your music on radio uh, and get royalties. Yes. Mm. Do you understand? That's mm. where I'm saying you can make money in so many ways mm. via music. Mm. So speaking of, for the sake of this interview, can you just, because based on your experience, you know, it's smart food. What, what, what do you think is the other ways that some of these other kids can use to explore their talent and make some kind of box from their talent as well, musically? Okay, well, first of all, there is the internet where you can sell your music to everyone in the world. All right. Second of all, mm. you can be a producer for anyone. Mm. 
thirdly, mm-hmm. you can sell your music via. Mm-hmm. You can help be a music, music movie producer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do jingles in studio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a whole lot of other things. Mm-hmm. Like, um, mm-hmm. You could be uh, your song could be playing when they are mm-hmm. when you're de- when you're holding on mm-hmm. telecom when you de- mm-hmm. when you're waiting. Uh, yeah, yeah, ringtones and ring stuff. Tones, mm-hmm. Or even those songs in the background mm-hmm. when you're holding when they say please hold and then there's a music. Wow, that's where the money is at. You see that, folks? That's that's like um, a one-on-one uh, the music business, like marketing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a one-on-one lecture in in in, in thirty seconds or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you if you think you're smart enough, man, you should have been able to grab that and use that to like you know know how to make some income from your music. 